Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of the reasons that I was very much awakened to um, politics as a way to uh, support social changes was on the issue of abortion. I was in college when the state legislature in Hawaii took up the issue of um, abortion rights. And in fact, the state of Hawaii was the first state to decriminalize abortion before Roe v. Wade. This is an issue that is very fundamental. What could be more fundamental than a person's right to control her own body and to make decisions relating to her body? What could be more invasive than to force us to have babies? I can't think of a single thing that we do basically to men that is as invasive as a bunch of politicians saying to a male person, you have to do this. I, I can't think of an instance, and yet something as invasive and fundamental as a woman's right to control her own body is under assault. So here comes Dobbs. I never thought I'd live to see the day when we have a Supreme Court majority that just summarily decides that something that I had taken as a constitutional right for almost 50 years, a constitutional right, where they just say, well, it's no longer a constitutional right. What kind of Supreme Court is that if they, the ultimate arbiter, arbiters of what is constitutional and not constitutional, decides that this right that I had for almost 50 years no longer exists, and you leave it to the politicians in each state to make that decision? I, I have no words to express what an assault this is on women in our country to force us to have babies. And now, even for the women who want to have babies, IVF is under assault. So I say, if you don't support abortion, don't get one, but leave the rest of us alone. There are good-hearted people fair-minded people on both sides of the abortion issue. I acknowledge that, and that is why it should never be a decision that is left up to a bunch of politicians. It's a decision that is so personal and so fundamental that it should be left to the person, individual, and her doctor, if she so chooses. So the ripple effects of Dobbs never ending and we know that already people are making decisions as to what states they're gonna live in, because if they live in one of the uh, many states that, uh, that criminalize abortion, they have to travel out of state to get the kind of reproductive health care that they need. And not all women, or not all families, have that capability. So um, once again, like the so-called right to abortion, if you were a poor person and lived in a state that did not provide funding for Medicaid abortions, you're pretty much out of luck. Hawaii was one of the few states that provided, that paid for Medicaid abortions because what is a constitutional right if that right to be exercised dependent on your economic situation? So we now have the, the circumstance where after Dobbs, uh, individuals have to travel out of state to get the abortion care and other reproductive care that they need. And don't tell me that IVF is legal everywhere. If so, why did Alabama have to pass a law that so-called legalizes uh, IVF in that state? And even that is not protective enough because if I were a clinic providing IVF care, I would definitely not want to take the chance that that Alabama law is going to protect me just as in Texas, their, their law protects uh, um, the right that what the, the if the health care, if the life of a woman is endangered, she can get an abortion. Oh, really? I don't think that's the case. Because what doctors, what providers are going to take the chance that maybe they did not uh, determine that correctly? and that they have to wait till they, the woman is practically on, a, on death's door in order to deem the protection of her life to be a, a one that, was, that would enable her to get an abortion. So, you know, the Dobbs decision has, uh, has uh, had so much negative effects. Medford Pristone, oh yes, we have a Supreme Court that is about to determine whether or not a medication that more than half of, uh, of people resort to Legally, 
in order to have an abortion. That could very well be banned because we have a Supreme Court that seems perfectly willing to just eliminate uh, what was deemed a 50-year constitutional right. So I come down to who's going to make the decision on whether or not a woman has a right, right to make reproductive decisions, bodily autonomy. Is it, a, is it the woman or should it be a bunch of us or state legislators? It is so clear to me who should have that decision making. And all of these bills, all of these efforts, and all of these ways that, that and, uh, and really to say that, um, that, <laughs> that this is an issue that, that uh, good hearted, right minded people have uh, um, um, very, you know, they, they come to different conclusions. Yeah, and I say that's right. And that is why we should have bodily autonomy. If you don't support abortion, don't get one. Leave the rest of us alone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.